Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you an extremely useful and reasonably priced electronics gadget that can save you a lot of time and money if you needed to locate sprinkler or city water lines buried in the ground, trace the path of metal or plastic electrical pipes under a concrete slab, or to trace the path of sewer lines so you know exactly where you're able to tap into them to add an additional sink or a bathroom. This product was not offered to me by any company. It was something that I chose to have sent to me. As usual, a product link has been placed in the video description area along with a money-saving coupon code if you decide you wanted to purchase one of these after watching the video. Okay, as you can see, there are two parts to this gadget. One is a transmitter and the other is a receiver. The transmitter and receiver both have built-in lithium polymer batteries and using the supplied cable, USB, it goes to two different ends. One could go into the unit right here and the other can go over here on the side of the wand. While each one of these devices is charging, the LED is going to be red, this one here, this one over here. When it's fully charged, it's going to turn green and green. As you can see right here, the housing is very durable. You have this nice handle. It resembles an electrician's fish tape. That's the back side of it. Inside this plastic housing, you have coiled up 20 meters of cable, right around 65 feet. And there is another model that has 30 meters of cable, which is just under 100 feet. The cable can be submerged underwater with no problem at all. Over here, you can see the sensor cable. It's around four millimeters in diameter. And the end is just over a quarter of an inch. And inside here, you have an inductor that gives off a signal. To turn on the unit, you would simply push this button. And right now, the signal is being generated at that tip. And even along the wires inside the cable, the signal at the tip is extremely strong and the signal in the cable itself is much lower. Now in the event that this cable got stuck inside of a conduit, it broke off, something happened that you damaged it, you can cut the cable and you can expose the two wires inside. You would strip it lengthwise using a razor blade and trim it around the outside edge, pull off the sheathing to get to those two wires. You would take the two wires in that cable, trim them short enough, just to be able to solder in this new radial inductor onto the end of the cable. Once it's soldered on using the provided solder, you're going to place crazy glue inside the red cap. You're going to slide it over the radial inductor as well as the cable. A little bit of crazy glue will ooze out. Just wipe it with a rag, allow it to set up. Once that's done, a little piece of heat shrink on top and you're good to go. It's as simple as that to replace the tip in the event you damage it. The signal given off by this tip can be detected using the receiver wand up to 20 inches away or 50 centimeters. Now let's take a look at the wand. Okay, over here is where I showed you previously when you go to charge the lithium polymer battery, which is right over here. Regular cell phone type of a battery. Pop it in, and just push the tab down and lock it. Charging supply is 5 volts, 500 milliamps, using the USB. The internal battery I just showed you, 1120 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts. And that's the battery model, BL5C. And of course, this is imported from China, so you're going to see a lot of writing on here in Chinese. Over here is the control to turn it on. Power indicator. If the battery was low, it would not be green, it would be red. And increasing sensitivity. The scale will go higher and higher. Now this wand is made as long as it is for a reason. When you're going to be searching along the ground, by having a longer wand, you're not going to have to lean over as far. 
And I did add one thing to this unit, and I'm going to show you the modification in a minute. On this end right over here, you can see there is a stereo jack for a headset. And being a person that metal detects a lot, I know how much better you can find things using a headset. So now I'll be able to take this, plug it in, and I'll be able to have this working perfectly with this unit. Over here you can see the speaker, and over there is exactly where the sensor is located for detecting the signal that's given off by the transmitter. Okay, here's a look at the inside of the wand. Six screws, you have two in the handle, and there's going to be one more here, there, here, and over there. Take an X-Acto knife, very gently lift it up. You can see one of the openings right there where the screw would be. Using a very tiny Phillips screwdriver, reach in and remove those screws. Over here, you can see the circuit board. It has the receiver circuitry, as well as circuitry for charging the lithium polymer battery. This integrated circuit right here is a KA2284 linear IC 5 dot LED driver. And you saw previously the indication of strength on the five LEDs above the power indicating LED that's controlled by this integrated circuit. Right over here is an LM386 surface mounted integrated circuit that's an audio amplifier used to drive the speaker. And this one over here is an HEF4093. It's a Schmidt trigger IC. It's a quad two input. Now if you take a look at the far end, right over here, this is the component that's going to be detecting the electromagnetic radiation given off by the end of the sensor cable. And all it is is an inductor. You can see it right over here. And it's a 130 ohm, 190 millihenry inductor. The sensitivity of this wand is very good, so there's really no reason to try and change things. But if you did want to, you can experiment by using different values for this component. Now the way this 8th inch stereo jack was installed is very simple. Yes, this is stereo, but this is mono. I'll show you what I did in a minute. I had a whole bunch of these laying around. And over here, you can see the negative of the speaker. The original wire was a black one. I left that alone. I'm pointing at it right there. And I, all I did was just tap in. I soldered another wire onto the negative, and I routed it all the way around over to the jack. The positive, this red wire, used to go to the speaker. I took that off, and I connected it onto another wire solder and heat shrunk, brought it all the way down to this jack. I took another wire, connected it to the positive of the speaker, and routed that one all the way to here. Very simple to do. The hardest part is putting both of these shells together and drilling a nice clean hole in the bottom of the unit using a unibit so you can position this. After it's soldered in, you can use some hot melt glue to hold it in position. Once this shell is put on top and bolted down securely, this will not be able to move. Now if you're wondering the connections of how these three wires go on here, you can take a look at this image right over here. Because it's a stereo jack, you can see there's a jumper that goes from one side to the other. And the purpose of that jumper is to ensure that you can hear this in your left and right ear. I'm now going to give you two demonstrations. One, I'm going to slide the sensor cable inside of an electrical metallic tubing underneath a concrete slab. And we're going to trace it using this wand. In the other demonstration, I'm going to insert the sensor cable inside of a sprinkler system to show you how easily you can trace the piping under the ground. I took the transmitting cable, slid it inside the electrical metallic tubing you see right here inside this electrical box. The wall is poured concrete and it goes down into the concrete and under the slab. So what I'm going to do is turn this on and sweep over the ground to show you how well this detects even through concrete. Now for the easiest detection you want to make sure all power is off in the home. This way there's no interference. 
Let me turn on the device. And when it gets in the right spot, you're going to hear the sound change. So it's right, it's right in that spot. Now I'm going to slide the cable in a little bit further. And I can detect it way up here. tip is right over here now. Let me insert some more. Okay, it's, it's now right over here. So we've established a path very easily going this direction from the receptacle. Now let me move the camera further back, push the cable further in, and we're going to see exactly where it's going underneath this concrete slab. And you can see the height. If I have my earphones on, I can grab it all the way up here. right right there let me push it another couple of feet okay let's give it a try now And right over here is exactly where that sensor cable tip is, and it's heading to this receptacle. Okay, let me give you a quick demonstration outside using a sprinkler system. For this demonstration, I took the sensor cable, inserted it into the sprinkler system, into this T, and I pushed it way inside. Now, I could hear the changes in audio, but the camera probably won't hear it. The signal you're going to get off the length of the cable is going to be weaker than what you get off the tip. The tip is very strong. I could hear it very faint. Gone. Gone, alright. You see when I turn it this way, the detection depth is deeper. If you want to pinpoint where the end of the sensor cable is, then you turn it this way. And I'm getting detection right here, even though you may not be able to hear it. Right here, I'm still detecting. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.